Okay, now that you have a few basics about C++ nailed down, it's a good time for some demo to really put things you've learned together and more importantly, have fun with your creation. We're going to write a small program on the console to guess the numbers. So let's get started and I'm going to explain it as we built it. So new project, we choose non qt project, plain C++ application. We call it 1.8, guess number, console. We store it in the usual location and we hit next. Choose your cat, finish. What we want is for the program to generate a secret number and your job is going to guess it. So the program is going to, to tell you, guess the number between one and 20, for example, and you're going to guess seven. And as you guess, the program is going to tell you if the number you are looking for is greater than what you guessed or lower than that. Okay, I hope this makes sense. And this is what we're going to build. The first thing we want to do is to generate that random number. And we are going to import a few files to allow us to do that. The first thing is going to be stdlib.h, which is going to help in generating random numbers. And we are going to import the time header file. And it's also going to help in generating the numbers. Okay, now that we have this, we're going to define two integers. The first one is going to be the guest number, and the other one is going to be the secret number. Okay, so let's say guest number here. And we're going to use this in a moment. The first thing we want to do here is to initialize our generator. Okay, and we do that like this. And this allows us to have a different number every time we run this application. After that, we're going to generate the number. For now, we want the number to be between one and 10. So we're going to say secret number equals round modulus 10 plus one. And this allows us to generate a random number that is between one and 10. I'd like to explain a little bit more on how this works. We've looked at the modulus operator. For every number we're going to generate, we're going to compute the modular of that number by 10. And this is going to give us what remains after you divide this number by 10. And that's going to be a number that is between zero and nine. We add a one so that we increase the range from one to 10. I hope this makes sense. And by now we have our secret number. The rest is really to allow the user to guess this number. So we're going to ask the user to guess. And you know how to do that already. See out, guess my number. And we're going to tell them that it is between one and 10 to kind of guide them into this process. Okay, so we're not going to end the line because we want this to be on the same line. And after this, we're going to use a loop to keep asking them until they uh, get the answer right. We are going to use a do while loop for this. You can use any loop you like. They all can do the same thing. And we're going to loop while guess is different from secret. Guess number. We're going to loop while guess number is not equal to secret number. I don't think I explained this before, but this is how you test to see if two numbers are not equal. This is a negation sign in programming languages. If you didn't know that, now you know. Okay, inside the loop, we're going to capture the number that the user typed in. And we do that using CIN, you know how to do that already. So we're going to say CIN, guess number. Now we have the number in memory. So after this, we're going to test to see 
if the secret number is less than what they actually guessed. And we do that like this, secret number is less than the guess number. We're going to say the number is lower to kind of guide them to finding the number they want to find. So we say see out B number is lower than that, let's say less. Okay, and if it is more than that, we're also going to say that. It is this easy. If secret number is more than guess number, is higher than that. Okay, and when we guess successfully the number, this loop is no longer going to be executed because this is going to become false. So we're going to exit out of the loop and we're going to congratulate the user on guessing the number. Congratulations. The number is what you guessed, okay? Guess number. Okay, now we have the program complete. We can run it to see if it does what we want it to do. So it says to guess the number between one and 10. So let's see if it's a six, okay, hit enter. The number is lower than that. Is it a three? Let's do that. It's higher than that, so it's four or five. And congratulations, the number is four. We kill the application, run it again. So seven, is it a seven? No, it's slower than that. Is it a five? Yes, it's a five. I got the number in just two trials. So by now you should be able to play with your knowledge in C++ to really write useful and fun programs that other people can start using. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to look at C++ functions and how they can help take your game to the next level in C++ development. I'll see you in the next lecture.